Hi, I'm Alan. This is a video. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to more Drama Dash. Today, I want to give you guys my pick for the 10 best medium range extreme demons in Drama Dash. For those of you who have beaten a few extreme demons and want to improve and get further along, but don't really know where to start. I know this is a very niche video. However, I... Uh, you watching, I'm going to assume that you've most likely not beaten your first extreme demon and you just watch this because you like to hear me talk about levels that I enjoy. So basically what this means is that these levels are extreme demons that are hard, but they're not list levels. Right now, the gap between the easy extreme demons that people usually enter extreme demon territory with and the list is very, very massive. You can find levels like Accu, all that stuff, and then you don't really know where to go. Finding easy extreme demons to do as your first, your first couple, very, very easy. There are a lot of resources out there. However, I don't really see anyone talking about the medium range extreme demons that no one really talks much about. So that's what I wanted to do today. Wanted to bring some attention to 10 levels that I think are a good gateway into the higher end of difficulty without being overtly challenging, if that makes sense. Obviously, as per usual with my list like this, I'm not going to cover the most popular of popular levels. So for this level list, I'm not going to be talking about stuff like Bloodbath, Phobos, Thanatos, Blade of Justice, levels like that that are in the higher range of Extreme Demon that you wouldn't do as your first, but you can do after like three, four, five of them, right? So without further ado, let's hop into it. These are my picks for the top 10 best medium range Extreme Demons to do to get into harder difficulties of Jump Dash. Now, as I usually do with this, I will talk about different levels that challenge different skill sets. And the first level that I've chosen is Innards. Uh, this is a very popular level, so you've most likely heard of it or played it. And we all know with the unearthed Innards being a consistent challenge within the community that people try to complete, Innards is a fairly popular level. However, I don't really see a lot of people go for Innards as like a upper end challenge to like get into harder difficulties. The thing about Innards is that obviously it is very heavily ship and wave carried. And that is the skill set that I would recommend to go for if you want to like practice. If you want to go for Innards, Ship and wave should be your priority. You should either be really good at it or really bad at it and want to improve at it. I did enters personally to improve a wave and it worked very, very fine in my personal humble opinion. This is a level that it starts off very slowly. So it's kind of a patience test as well. But once you get into like the 30s, the level gets very, very fast paced, very difficult, but it is a very fun time. And I think personally that innards is a very good choice. It's definitely too hard to be a first, but I think if you want to improve at ship and wave or ship and wave is your best skill set, this is a very good level to get into the higher end of difficulty. The second level that I'm going to be talking about is also a rather popular one. However, I feel like over the years it has fallen more and more into obscurity. It is Niflheim by Vismuth. Niflheim has a gameplay style that, if you have played any levels like it, you know exactly what I'm going to be saying. Korean style. Korean creators have a very distinct style of creating, and especially creating gameplay. And there are a lot of very hard Korean levels out there. Stuff like Visible Ray. You have True Effect, you have Esfera. They have a very distinct style. And Niflheim is a very, very good level, in my opinion, to get into the whole learning Korean style of gameplay. Because for some reason, they've just invented their own thing. And I think Niflheim is a great one. It is one of the easier levels on this list. It is not that hard. And I have seen people do this as their first extreme demon as well. However, I wouldn't personally recommend it. If you do like the learning kind of stuff and the whole like text portal stuff that they do for some reason, I think Niflheim is fantastic. I really like this level. I think it's a very very, very fun one. As I said, it is learning, so don't feel frightened or intimidated by the fact that it will take you a while to learn, especially if you're going to do it as a hardest. But either way, Niflheim is a fantastic and fun level that I highly recommend. Next up, uh, number three, definitely not any form of bias here. It is Quar by Viprin. The reason why I put this level on the list here is because upon release, I thought this was like a super easy one, but then over time, people have said that, oh, it's pretty difficult. Uh, not necessarily bloodbath difficulty, but it can be compared according to some. And I put it on here because I think it is a high quality level and it tests consistency first and foremost. What I mean by consistency is that this is one of those levels that, Jesus Christ. What is happening? What I mean by consistency is that first and foremost, this is one of those levels that you get far with very frequently. When I was verifying core, I was getting to the 40s, 50s, and 60s, like basically every single attempt. So it's one of those levels that you need to have a relative good understanding of consistency because the latter half of the level is the harder part. Therefore, needing to be a consistent player is the key to completing this level. Flash's part is infamously very hard and is a massive choke point in a sense where it is very easy to fail that part. It is a very intricate part. It is very difficult. So getting to the 60s over and over and over again is going to be key. If you enjoy consistency and you're a consistent player, do check this one out. I think it's a fantastic one. Quar, 
by my friend, very, very solid. Number four is a recent level that I've completed and one I have praised very highly. It is U235 by Oleki. This level is what I would consider a click pattern level. And what I mean by click pattern level is just, it's learny, but not super learn. It is a very straightforward level. However, it follows distinct click patterns that whenever you get it down, it becomes ungodly consistent. Levels such as Kovareta, Vasareta, and Kusareta fall under the click pattern umbrella as well because they're click patterns. They're very distinct click patterns. The reason why those levels have over the years become easier is because people get better and better at click patterns. And if those levels interest you, I think U235 is a perfect level to get into click pattern levels because it's not super difficult, but it's also a very fun one that is very accessible to a lot of people. It's not a level that requires very high hertz, in my opinion. I think it is not so carried by refresh rate, which is a very good thing. You can't definitely beat this on low refresh rate. However, the wave part around 60 is kind of difficult, but that's besides the point. I think this is a fantastic one. If click pattern levels are something that interest, interests you, U235 is a very, very good one, in my opinion. Number five is the Acropolis remake, Acrosis. And the thing about Acrosis is that it's just a very straightforward timing level. If you enjoyed Acropolis, which I know a lot of people do, a lot of people really love Acropolis by Zobros, Acrosis is a fantastic level for you. It is a good timing level that I think has a certain style of gameplay towards the end, which Acropolis kind of innovated in a way, which is wave control. When it comes to wave, it's often just a click pattern. You can just like wave your way through. A lot of it's just like straightforward corridors. However, Acropolis did something with the end wave that I think was somewhat revolutionary in the sense that it requires wave control rather than just being able to follow the path. And that style of wave control is something that you don't see a lot in mid range and easy extreme demons, but you see them a lot more going further up into difficulty. So if that's something that terrifies you and something that you're very bad at, I would highly recommend playing Acrosis simply because it's a very good way of getting better at it. I got much better wave control through Acrosis and I think a lot of other people will as well. So if you are interested in this type style of gameplay, Acrosis, highly recommend. Next up is uh, another level that I think is absolutely fantastic and I have no bias whatsoever towards it. It is Rash by Loltad. This level is learning. If you enjoy learning gameplay levels that just, it takes you a while to understand how all the g certain gimmicks and the level just flows and plays. Rash is fantastic. If you enjoy levels that take you a while to just fully grasp levels such as Rust, Rash is a fantastic place to go. Rash can very easily just be your gateway drug into learning levels. And I think it's a very, very good one for that reason. It is a little bit back end heavy, meaning that the, the ending of the level is very, very difficult. However, I think that because of how learning it is, it also inherently becomes much more consistent because there's something about learning gameplay that just becomes more consistent after a while because to begin with you're like oh this is super inconsistent i don't really understand it i'm i'm having a hard time with it but once you actually learn the level and you get around to mastering the level itself it becomes extremely consistent and it's very very fun highly highly recommend rash by lol tad it is one of the best levels in the game and it is a very good level to do trying to get into like the mid range of extreme demons in my opinion Next up is a level that I don't really see anyone ever talk about, and it is a level that I think is one of the best all-around extreme demons in this range of difficulty. It is Torsion by Ravel. Torsion is one of those levels that it doesn't really necessarily test one particular skill set. It just checks if you're consistent with everything. It has wave, it has ship, it has timings, it has absolutely everything. It has a little bit of memory as well towards the end. Very solid level if you just want to be an all-rounder. And I don't think there's any level in this range of difficulty that tests it better than this one. I think it's a fantastic level. Number eight is one of those kind of claustrophobic-ish levels. Uh, it's a style of level that got popular with Cognition. It is Karkano, and this level has been nerfed since I beat it, so I don't have it, the best understanding of how hard it is now. However, from what I've heard, it's still around the medium range of difficulty. It is a very fun level. I really enjoyed it even before the nerf, and I think it's a very solid level. It tests timings, and that's pretty much it, as I'm a really hard wave part. But for the most part, it is just purely a timing level. If you are a timing player and something like Cognition sounds like something that you want to do as like your end goal, or maybe even Oblivion, I think Karkano is a very good place to start, and it's a very fun one as well. It is surprisingly enjoyable. I'm the kind of person who looks at something like Cognition, and I'm like, that does not look fun whatsoever, but I had fun with Karkano. Maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you're gonna have fun with Cognition and not Karkano. I don't really know, but I think Karkano is a very good level to just like get into that style. It has a lot of like hit late, hit early kind of situation where the inputs just look much harder than they are. I think visually, Karkano is one of those levels that look super difficult, but it is very approachable and it is also very straightforward. It's easy to learn, it's easy to pick up, and I think it's a good level for anyone to try. 
Number nine is the only XL that I have on this. Sadly, there aren't a lot of like super long XL mid-range extremes. Not that I've completed at least. So this is the only XL that we're going to be having on this list today. It is Shock Therapy by Arb and Gang. This is one of those levels that just all around tests a little bit of everything really it, it has a wide range of difficulty a wide range of gameplay styles and it is just a very fun level i thought this was an absolute blast to play back when i beat it i beat this as a second hardest and i thought it was absolutely amazing to play it is an excel level so it obviously comes with the unfortunate unfortunate side effect of being very long but if you enjoy long levels i think this could be a very good one to go for it has all around difficult gameplay in every single category it has wave it has ship it has duels it has timings and everything it has nerve-wracking slow parts in the middle of the level to just make it more scary and it has an ending that is very very tight which is very fun obviously we all love the good old super difficult impossible endings right 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 yeah i know i, I know you do <laughs> And the last level that we're talking about today is probably the hardest one as well. It is a level that I recently beat and I, I needed to throw in a wave level here because there's always that one person who's like, oh, I want to be the next Akar and I want to beat every nine circles level ever. The level that I've chosen is Hyper Paradox. It is probably one of the hardest ones. Just a very standard nine circles level. It's a fun one. It's a very enjoyable nine circles level. Therefore, I think it is highly worth playing. Either way, I think Hyper Paradox is a good wave level for anyone who just enjoys nine circles stuff. It's a list about mid range extreme demons and nothing screams extreme demon more than nine circles levels therefore i had to throw one in but don't get me wrong even though i feel like i'm kind of like obligated to put in a nine circles level i do still think there's a good level and i would actually highly recommend anyone playing it uh, hyper paradox is one of those levels that it tests a little bit of everything it tests the jankiness of duels it tests fast inputs and spam it tests interesting click patterns and it just tests a little bit of everything really that's the thing that i think hyper paradox does well is that it tests all of the different styles of nine circles gameplay and wave gameplay therefore it's probably one of the best ones to do for improvement anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the levels obviously i don't have a like a mind compendium of every single medium range extreme demon i only ever choose levels that i can speak of from experience because i don't like recommending levels that i haven't beaten myself uh, so all of these are levels that i've personally completed hopefully you guys enjoy some of them give some feedback if you end up going for some of these uh, especially as a hardest and tell me what you guys think anyway i'll see you guys around as you can see i dehydrated think we're making my day better hoping yours a little bit better too remember to hit that subscribe button i would truly appreciate it and i'll see you guys later join my discord server uh you can always just ask me directly for recommendations if you ever want one so my discord server is a fantastic place for that and i'll see you guys around take care everyone